Gremlin provides failure as a service. We proactively break things to find the weak spots and systems to help make them stronger. The analogy I often draw is that of the flu shot or the vaccine. We're going to inject a little bit of harm in order to find those weak spots and build an immunity. So I, I cut my teeth in this space about 10 years ago working for Amazon.com. We were part of the retail website availability team and it was our job to make sure that the website didn't go down. When the website goes down, it costs a lot of money in terms of revenue. And most of what we did was reactive. After things are broken, how quickly can we fix it? What we found was this was a, a proactive thing we could do to prepare, to prevent outages from ever occurring. This isn't really a new idea. We were doing hardware failure testing in the 60s and 70s. People were writing papers and talking about this in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. But what we've seen as people move to the cloud, as people adopt these microservice architectures, these distributed systems, now we're ever more reliant on other people's software. And so one, one aspect is prepare for the things that can go wrong to us. A host could disappear, a network device could fail, a, you know, a disk could fill up. The other part is preparing for what happens when our dependencies fail. So if I store things in S3 or Dynamo and they happen to experience a hiccup, I want to be prepared so that I can ensure that my customers don't feel that pain and we gracefully degrade where possible. So when things break, that tends to be a common impetus to get better. But we'd like it to be a bit more proactive, something you prepare for. A lot of people are adopting this DevOps SRE movement. You know, you build it, you own it, you operate it. And so now it becomes ever more important that engineers can practice this, that they can go out and do this in advance. And so a lot of our customers, they're doing monitoring, they're doing alerting, they're, they're seeing how their systems behave. This is a way to verify that you've set it up correctly. As silly as it sounds, I've been part of many outages where somebody wasn't monitoring something correctly, somebody didn't get paged, and something took three or four times longer than it needed to to fix. So I see we have a lot of customers moving to the cloud or moving to Kubernetes or doing different environments. And they often say, oh, you know what, we'll worry about this chaos engineering or resilience after we're there. I think that's a little, a little silly. You want to you wanna mitigate the risk of this large investment you're doing. You want to ensure that when you're there, your systems run at least as well as they did before, if not better. And so you want to invest in this as part of that move. It helps you de-risk it. It helps you prepare for it and ensure that your systems behave well and that your customers don't feel that pain.